evening, um, it's Sunday the 4th of March and I'm just recording the second episode of my video diary of my possible diagnosis of MS. Uh, like I said in the last one, it's not certain yet, there's an 80% certainty, uh, but uh, there's that other 20% that they're not going to know until they've examined all those 20 vials that they took out of my arm. Uh, and my cerebrospinal fluid. So I just have to wait for those results of those tests. And that's in all likelihood not going to be for about a month until about the start of April. Um, I was telling uh, a friend, my, my son's godfather, about uh, my possible diagnosis this evening. And he said that he actually um, had been receiving injections of corticosteroids, uh, hydrocortisone, for uh, about 22 years now. And uh, I asked him, as a matter of interest, uh, how much uh, he had to have injected for his uh, hypo. Something to do with his pituitary gland uh, packing up his hypopituitary this or something like that. I'm not sure. Anyway, he said 150 micrograms. Okay. Now, just to put it in perspective, uh, this is Xanax. This is a tablet that I have to take three of a day. I have to take half of one tablet every single day. And uh, a tablet is this big. If you can see on the, or you can see just down there by my middle finger. Uh, I'll take half of one of those per uh, three times a day. Now, one of these tablets is 0.25 of a milligram and Wednesday, Thursday and Friday of the week coming I'm going to be injected with a gram <laughs> of hydrocortisone which is just an incredible amount it just makes me laugh thinking about it um, anyway, the first episode of, of this diary uh, has been well received by the few people who've seen it and I'm not surprised that so few have considering just how many uh, new videos there are per day on YouTube uh, and the people who've contacted me in private uh, to say that they really appreciated me doing this uh, has really pleased me. If I can be of any help whatsoever in terms of uh, relating my experience and uh, relating it to something that somebody else is experiencing so much the better. Um, one of the things I've noticed, and I hadn't really noticed it until uh, it was pointed out that it was a possible side effect, was the fact that I, I get tired more easily. Um, so an hour of stern play with Finn, my son, um, chasing around after him or playing with the ball or whatever, uh, would tire me out and leave me puffing and panting, which would never have been the case. I'm not. Uh, uh, a lardy guy. I'm not overly overweight or anything. Um, and I'm in reasonable physical shape. I cycle about what eight miles a day to and from work each way. Um, so uh, 15 kilometres. Uh, so uh, I don't do that badly, and yet that's tiring me out. Uh, my wife Fiona has also noted that. When I come home after work, if I'm riding my bike, um, I take a lot longer to recover from it than I would have done previously. Uh, even though I've now been riding that bike for three years, four years nearly. Um, uh, so one would imagine that I would get more used to doing the journey and less stressed out by it, less tired by it. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, so for this, um, changing the subject, for this hospital visit um, on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this week, um, I found out that they have uh, high bandwidth uh, internet service there. So I might see if I can produce the third edition of this diary from my hospital bed and send it out to you good people on the interweb. Um, and uh, if not, then it will be next weekend when I come home. Uh, and 
uh, Wednesday morning when I go, uh, I'm getting uh, a taxi service to the hospital. There's a, um, there's a service of ambulances that pick people up from wherever they are and need them to take them to where they need to get to, and they have all kinds of criteria. Um, and perhaps it's just standard operating procedure anywhere you go, but obviously not having had this kind of trouble before, I didn't know about it. Um, and uh, I spoke to a woman at the other end of the phone, and she was fantastic, very cheerful. Um, obviously she has to deal with a lot of people who've never done this before, and it's scary for them. And so um, she made sure that I was at ease. Um, so I'm getting that. And the reason that I can get that without having to pay for anything is because my doctor has started the proceedings uh, for getting me an ALD certification. ALD is an affection longue durée, because I live in France, remember? Um, and that means long term illness in English. And uh, basically, uh, once you are diagnosed with something that is an ALD, um, all the medical expenses related to it are taken fully care of by the state. Um, so even though you might have health insurance, uh, the health insurance doesn't rise because you're calling on their services more and more frequently uh, because they don't have to pay out anything for uh, taking care of you. Uh, there are a few illnesses that are considered ALDs. Uh, I haven't the faintest notion what they are. And um, suffice it to say that getting free medical treatment is not a sufficient reason to actually try and get one. <laughs> um, uh, I'm keeping my chin up and I feel quite cheerful. A lot of people are worried about me being uh, upset or depressed and certainly the Xanax which are anti-anxiety tablets help and certainly if I have to tell people face to face I still feel somewhat nauseous as I'm describing to them what goes on and uh, I find it easier to ship the URL for YouTube to somebody um, rather than uh, discussing it with them head on. But uh, obviously with the YouTube videos being a limit of 10 minutes uh, you can't very well um, tell the whole story in one episode and in fact I'm going to have to stop this episode any second now because I'm running out of time on it as well. Um, thanks very much for listening and uh, hopefully I'll speak to you from the hospital. If not, then it will be uh, this weekend coming, uh, the weekend of my mum's birthday, the 10th and 11th. Um, take care, one and all, and speak to you soon. Bye.